Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers, where I have been slowly going through all the systems I've owned or played and I'm letting you know my 10 favourite games for them, because I think I'm important. I'm not saying these games are the best ones on the system, but they are the ones that I'm nostalgic for and that I think about when talking about that system. This time round it's the Commodore 64, the first computer thingy that I played at home, other than the Einstein, but I barely remember that. I still have a soft spot for the C64, and right now I'm going to show you some of my favourites. So how about I shut up, you press that subscribe button, and we take a look at some games. Ghost Hunters from Codemasters is a game I always used to play with my brother, even though we had no idea what the hell we were doing. That's right, I said hell. English people are tough, so we don't have to say heck. The game sees you take control of a ghost hunter, who is actually pretty useless, as he seems to be terrified of everything he sees. Though, to be fair, the house you are in is filled with all sorts of monsters, skeletons, vampires, mummies, and of course, rats, bats, and spiders. You've got to run around collecting items and hitting switches that let you explore more of the mansion. If you hold down the fire button and you're playing in one player, you start shooting your machine gun and a crosshair appears. Guide this over any monsters to make them go off the screen to stop you losing your macho energy. The game looks decent and has a fantastic spooky aesthetic. The worst thing about it though is that every couple of seconds a hint box appears on the screen telling you to avoid monsters or to collect the items and so on. This is fine the first time you play the game, but it happens every time, and stops everything that's going on. It gets really annoying when you've seen and played the game a few times, and you still get the same three messages appearing on the screen. However, I still find this one really fun to play. And what's more is that this game can and should be played in two-player co-op, where one player controls the guy on the screen, and the other player controls the gun and has to shoot the enemies. This is definitely the best way to play the game, and I highly recommend this one if you have a friend. Scooby-Doo and Scrappy 2 is another game that I grew up with on the C64, and I really like it. You play as Scrappy and have to rescue Scooby and Shaggy who have been captured. I have no idea what happened to the rest of the gang, presumably they are dead. It's a side-scrolling platform game and it plays really well. You can run and jump by pressing up on the joystick, which is never ideal, but you'll get used to it. The fire button punches and you can hold it down to increase your puppy power. Most enemies can be killed with just the tap of a button, but for larger enemies like zombies you'll need a full charge. You can even use this to smash walls and create shortcuts. What's annoying though is that the only way to figure out which enemies need to be charged up is by trial and error. Also there are some enemies that can't be killed at all, but you won't know about this until you've tried killing them a few times with no avail. There's no music in the game, which is a shame, and the only sounds are of you jumping, punching, or collecting items, so it can feel a little flat at times. Thankfully, the gameplay is solid. You definitely need to get used to the timing of the punches and how the jumping works. Also, it's one of those weird games that when you jump on a moving platform, you actually have to move with it. You can't stand still on the platforms, as they'll just slide out from under your feet. It took me a while to get used to this again, and it can make the platform sections really tricky. Though I guess this is a good thing really, as even with these tricky bits, I completed the game in about 10 minutes, which is actually the first time I finished this game, though I did have an infinite lives cheat on it, I will admit. Without those, it would probably take considerably longer. But I would say this is a game worth taking the time to play through once. It could definitely be considered a bit of a hidden gem for the system. Barbarian 2 The Dungeon of Drax is a really cool hack and slash adventure game that, along with most C64 games I had as a kid, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing, but I loved doing it anyway. Here you get to choose from two characters, the sexy buff dude and the sexy buff woman. I always chose the woman, because, you know, boobs. Your quest is a simple one, you have to take down the evil Drax, but to get to him you have to fight your way through a maze-like world filled with loads of deadly enemies. It's all side-on and the game looks great. You control your chosen barbarian with the joystick and you've got a surprising amount of moves. You can walk and run, and if you're running you can jump. And you'll need to do this to leap over rivers of lava and bottomless pits. As well as this, enemies will constantly be spawning in that you'll have to fight, and these bastards are tough. The combat is kind of okay though. You hold down the fire button, which is common in these games, and then you do a different attack depending on the direction you press on the stick. Up does an overhead slash, down does a crouching slash, towards the enemy does a kick and pressing away from the enemy does a sweet powerful spinning jump slash. It's all about timing though. 
Each attack takes a different number of frames of animation to hit the enemy, so you need to learn when to use each one. It's usually safest to use the kick when an enemy is close, as it has a short range and is quick. Of course, the longer the attack takes, the more powerful it is, but the harder it is to hit enemies. But the bad guys will mostly walk at you, but will back off when you start attacking, so it's not easy to learn. Also, there is a great variety of monsters here, with small enemies that can only be hit with lower attacks, and some massive bastards that take up half the screen and will bite your head off in just one chomp. It is definitely frustrating when you first start playing, but once you get into it, it's really damn addictive. You have a sort of compass that you can follow that shows you which way you need to go, roughly, and you'll explore caves and wastelands before getting into the dungeon, each with more traps and enemies. You also need to collect a certain number of items before you can find the exits, and it's not easy to get them all, let me tell you. The game also looks fantastic, with some great big sprites. The animation is choppy, but it kind of works, and the enemies just look great. There's even a bit of gore in here. This is a game I'll probably never complete, but I guarantee I'll fire it up every time I break out the C64. Bubble Bobble is a game that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, and I believe it's also friend of the show Belt Buckle Bill's favourite game on the C64, and maybe even all time. In case you don't know, you play as one of two punk kids that have had their girlfriends kidnapped and then been turned into dinosaurs by the evil Baron Von Blubber. You have to go through a hundred single screen stages where your only objective is to murder everyone on the stage. To do this, you blow bubbles, which captures them, and then you jump into them, bursting the bubbles with the spikes on your back, and presumably impaling the enemies at the same time for a slow, agonising death. Killing enemies is fun and easy, and they'll leave behind things for you to collect. Mainly just fruit for points, but you'll sometimes get letters to spell the word extra, which gives you another life. The levels start simple enough, with a few platforms in them and a handful of enemies, but it doesn't take long before a load of enemies are all over the place that bounce all around all over the shop and are hidden behind platforms that you've got to be pixel perfect to jump on without dying. You also get bonus stages, and you'll find power-ups that let you skip a bunch of levels as well. These are very handy, as there's a hundred of the bastards, and this is another game that I've never finished and likely never will, but it is still fun to try. The controls here aren't simple, as it's just the joystick. You press up to jump, and the fire button fires your bubbles. The game looks decent enough as well. Not a patch on the arcade game, of course, but you can still see where everything's meant to be, even if Bub and Bob are a little dorky looking. Also, the game can be played in two-player co-op, which is really fun, and just as challenging, even though you can help each other out. It is fun to come up with the strategies for each level and work together to stab the monster bastards. If you take too long on a level though, Baron Von Blubber will come and kick the shit out of you, so watch out for that. And if you lose all your lives, it's back to the start of the game for you, punk. And of course, that music is just iconic. So yeah, this is still a great game. I think it's decent no matter what platform you get it for, and the C64 is no exception. Hey look, it's Ed the Duck. Now, Ed the Duck might not mean much to anyone outside the UK, but over here he was the co-host for a number of kids shows, and he was just a puppet of a duck, and I loved him. And I actually remember getting this tape for this game at Toys R Us in Southampton near me. The gameplay here is kind of like Rainbow Islands, which funnily enough was the sequel to Bubble Bobble. It's a vertically scrolling action game where you control Ed, who starts at the bottom of every level and has to make his way to the top and collect every star along the way, while avoiding a ton of enemies who want him dead. According to the story, it all takes place in various TV studios, but that's by the by. But yeah, the gameplay is simple, you go up and collect stars, but boy is it tough. There's enemies everywhere, and while they don't exactly have complex AI, literally all they do is move back and forth in a given direction, or sometimes even in a circle. But the sheer number of them and the placement makes them hard to avoid. You can defend yourself to a degree, you have an unlimited supply of snowballs that you can throw. At least I always assumed they were snowballs. Hitting an enemy with one will freeze it for about 5 seconds, so you have a chance to get past, but if enemies are bunched together, you really need to position yourself and time it perfectly. Enemies are almost always blocking a platform you need to get on or one of the stars you need to collect, so often avoiding them isn't even an option. You're always told how many stars you need, which is handy, as there are times where you'll get to the top of a level and can't go anywhere, which is when you realise that you've missed a star or two. Thankfully, you can always go back down the level as often as you need to, but enemies will always be waiting, so watch out. 
The bad guys are all kind of wacky from kind of 90s British TV with strange fish, bees and hands that grab you and clowns with faces and so on. None of it makes too much sense but it kind of does if you watch British kids TV in the late 80s and early 90s. And I do like the graphics here, they're nice and colourful and it plays really smoothly. It is bloody hard and I can barely get past the first few levels but again I always have loads of fun while I try to. Next up is The Muncher, or possibly The Muncher Eats Chewits. This is a side-scrolling rampage ripoff where you play as The Muncher, who was the mascot thing for the delicious Chewits sweets, or candy if you're that way inclined. The Muncher was always shown on TV adverts as a Godzilla-like monster who would devastate London, eating all the buildings and the only defence was to give him the sweets to satiate his appetite. Well, in the game here, you play as the Muncher, a giant dinosaur, who has to walk from left to right, destroying all the buildings in your way, as well as dealing with any pesky army people or locals who happen to get in your way. You can climb basically any building you see, and you've got a few attacks you can use to smash them. You can punch and bite, and if you're at the base of a building, turning left and right acts as a tail whip which destroys the foundations. You even have a flame breath move that you can use, but it doesn't last very long, and I couldn't figure out how to replenish your fire breath. Not to worry though, as you can just eat pesky humans that get in the way, which you'll need to do actually, as this is how you get your health back. Not much health, but sometimes enough. Now, your actual objective here is really just to get to the end of the level, so you can ignore enemies and buildings if you want to, and sometimes it is worth it, and it can be very easy to die, but then you are missing out on most of the fun of smashing stuff up. There are soldiers that will shoot at you, as well as tanks and choppers that fire rockets. Eating humans is fun, and you get a cool little noise as they scream when you eat them and crush their bones. It's so cute. The game looks decent with massive sprites, and the collapse in buildings are actually quite decent for the system, which is nice. The levels are kind of varied enough, and it is fun to play. As with every other game here though, it is damn hard, and I've only ever made it to the third level. I get the impression that there aren't that many more after this, if it's even possible to get that far. It might be one of those games where they've just deliberately made it impossible to progress. Either way though, I would recommend it for a bit of arcadey destruction fun, and it really is one of the games that I think about when I think about the C64. Time for something completely different. Here is Little Computer People, a strange program that doesn't even call itself a game. Instead, it's more of a simulator where you have a little computer person that you can just interact with and observe. And I don't know why, but this game had me hooked for hours and is still one that I look back at fondly today. So what happens is you load the game and then you see a cross section of a nice house with a ton of rooms and stuff in it. Then, after a few minutes, your little computer person will walk in, as well as his cool dog. He spends the first few minutes walking around the house, inspecting all the rooms and what's in them. Once he's happy and settled, you can start interacting with him. Or at least you can if half your keyboard doesn't decide to stop working like mine did. You can type simple commands to your little computer person, asking him to do things like play on the computer, play you a song on the piano, write you a letter, have something to eat, and so on. All of these commands are typed in, and you get a better result if you're polite, so the best way to ask something is to say things like, please play me a song, or please do a dance, and if you haven't been a dick to him, then he'll usually do it. You also need to make sure that he's fit and healthy, so there are other commands you can input for food deliveries so he doesn't get hungry, including deliveries for his dog, who you might need to remind him to feed every now and then. If he doesn't take care of himself, then he'll turn green and get sick, so you know you need to get him to eat or do some exercise. You can even make the phone ring so he has someone to talk to and doesn't get lonely, you can give him books to read and music to listen to so he doesn't get bored, and you can even get him to watch TV and go to sleep so he doesn't get too tired. It's just so cute, and he looks like a cool dude. And really, that's all you do in the game. There is no real particular goal to it, you just chill out with the little guy and get him to do stuff. It's fun figuring out what you can interact with, but sometimes it is a shame when you realise the options are a bit limited. But still, it's a fun one to go back to, and I do recommend giving it a try. You'll be surprised at how attached you get. Here is Mayhem in Monsterland, a game which most C64 fans won't be surprised to see here. This is one of the best and most technically impressive 2D side-scrollers for the system, I reckon. You play as Mayhem, a dinosaur thing, and Monsterland has been turned into a world of misery and all the colour sucked out of it and the monsters transformed into even more miserable monsters. 
Thankfully, there is another magic dino who can help, but to do this he needs you to jump on the heads of monsters to find their magic sacks filled with magic dust. Get them all and you can go and find the dino who then returns the colour to that level. Simple. And once you've done that, you then replay that level in all its colourful glory with the monsters returned to their usual states. But you still have to kill them all, though this time round you can collect all the stars and move on to the next stage. So the gameplay is simple enough, you just go left and right jumping on the heads of everything you see and taking their stuff, but it's all done very well, especially for the C64. Enemies don't do a whole lot other than walk left and right and occasionally shoot something at you, but there is a fair bit of tricky platforming and the enemies are often put in areas that are hard to get to without being hit yourself. And really you do want to kill everything you see because they might have the magic or stars that you need. You can get a running power up that lets you do a dash attack and run through most enemies. This is great and you'll need it to make some of the tougher jumps as well. The graphics here are fantastic, with some really great bright colours and some very impressive scrolling and animation for the system. Enemies look good, so even the big pixely ones are cool to look at, and there's even little details like if you're stood on the edge of a platform, Mayhem looks a bit worried. The only real downside, which is a common thing for C64 games, is that there is only one button on the joypad, so you have to press up to jump, which isn't ideal, but if you're emulating this, you can probably sort it out with a bit of tweaking. I'm surprised that this never got a release anywhere else, as I think it would have made a cool NES game. It was actually released on the Wii Virtual Console, and I got it immediately when it was released there, and I loved playing it again, and I still do today. A must play for the C64. Here is Marauder, which I think was one of the first games I played on the C64. It's a really cool vertically scrolling shooter where you take control of a tank and have to blast your way through a bunch of levels, taking out other tanks, turrets and random shapes that can apparently shoot at you. It's a very simple game, you just make your way up the screen. It doesn't auto-scroll, it only moves when you do and enemies will appear. You've got two attacks, there's your cannon which kills everything in just a few shots, which is actually a laser, and you've got a supply of smart bombs that can destroy everything on screen, including enemy bullets, to get you out of a tight spot. What's cool is that you can actually shoot a lot of the enemy missiles as well, but if the bullet's just a single pixel, then you'll want to get out of the way. As you're shooting and exploring, you do want to keep an eye out for these things that look like smarties. Destroying these gives you a random power-up, but they aren't always good. You might get an extra life, or you might get a smart bomb, and sometimes you even turn invincible for a short while. But be careful, as the power-ups might also jam your laser, take away your life, or smart bombs, or even reverse the controls for a few seconds. Of course, all of these things suck, so you're advised to keep these on screen and make them the last thing you destroy, so you don't screw yourself over. There's only three levels here, and they actually just repeat infinitely until you lose all of your lives. But none of them are easy. You start in a jungle before going into what looks like an enemy base, and then what looks like an outdoor enemy base or airfield. All the levels have plenty to blow up as well as obstacles in the way that make it hard to avoid enemy fire. It took me a while before I could get past the first level even, and you'll need to learn them before you get very far. They don't seem to get any tougher though as you loop through, as far as I could tell anyway. Something that really stands out here though is the music, which is just awesome. I had forgotten about it, but when I came back to play it for this video, I was immediately taken back to the late 80s when I would have played this. Graphically, it's fine, nothing special, but it's not bad. I do have to say though that the enemy designs are pretty crappy. They just seem to be random shapes that make no sense, which was often the case in games back then. But hey, you'll be too busy dodging all their attacks to really give a damn. But if you can, definitely play this game. And finally for today, here is Stuntman Seymour. For some reason the C64 was your go-to if you wanted your hero to be egg-based. You had Dizzy, but also Seymour, who didn't seem to get as much love, but if you ask me, was the better of the two. I remember having a pack of Seymour games called Seymour Goes to Hollywood, and it even came with a poster that was always on my brother's wall. There was a few games included, and this one was by far my favourite. It's an action platform game where you are Seymour, the egg, who is just a stuntman for a bunch of films. So you go through the levels, fighting the other goons, who are presumably all actors, and killing the final boss of each stage, which is presumably the big boss fight at the end of the movie, and they're always a massive creature of some sort. The levels are quite large, and you'll need to do a fair bit of platforming and exploring to get through them. They're all themed, you've got Wild West level, Pirate level, an Ice level, and a City level. 
There's enemies all over the place, but you've got two ways to defend yourself. You can shoot an unlimited amount of bullets, or you can throw a Molotov cocktail by pressing down on the joystick. As you've probably guessed by now, pressing up makes you jump on the joystick, which can make some of the platforming tricky, but really the controls here are very good and responsive. Enemies you kill drop items, but these are only for points, with the exception of the extra Molotovs that you'll collect. Each level has a boss at the end, and these are all huge and look cool, even if they do basically all play the same and really are just reskins, but still, they do get faster and tougher. Graphics wise, it looks really good. The sprites are all large and have a surprising amount of detail, and the variety in enemies and levels is great, even though there's only four of them. Also, the music here is just great, and you really can't deny that the C64 had one of the best sound chips of that generation. The sound of music from those games is instantly recognisable. If you're a fan of action platform games, then this is another one that you really need to check out. I love it. So there you go, my 10 favourite games for the C64. Well, actually not quite, as I would have included Gangsters and Army Days, which are two light gun games which I played the hell out of back in the day. But sadly I've got no way of playing the C64 light gun games these days, so if you do, make sure you go try them out. What are your favourite games on the C64? There's so many out there and I love trying new ones, so be sure to let me know in the comments below. And now, all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.